Welcome to the video. I make videos like this about particular albums or bands or artists that I like but have not been a dedicated fan and have followed them throughout their career. Um, I subscribe to the view that there's only a, a small amount of bandwidth that we have that allows us to take the deep dive into particular artists or bands um, in only a handful of cases. I mean, I've got a huge record collection, CD collection, um, and I listen to music almost every day. Uh, and for a long time, I listened to it every day, all day, um, when I was able to, when I wasn't working. And um, But there's only been a handful of those bands or artists that I, I can say with real authority, I know a lot about the bands, these particular bands or artists. Uh, Today's example is uh, an example of a band that I've followed for a very long time, but I've never been truly, truly dedicated. So I'm going to single out one particular album that I think represents the very best of them. And if you were a newcomer to the band or you, um, you yourself were thinking about, well, which is the best one, the best album that they ever released, then you might agree with this particular example. Uh, today. So the band is Simple Minds and the album that I'm going to major on is the, I think it was the 1980 release, New Gold Dream, 81, 82, 83, 84. So this to me is the one and this is the reason why. So how did I um, come into contact or get into uh, Simple Minds? Well, um, it was before they released that, what I considered to be an awful single, Don't You Forget About Me. And I think the band themselves weren't too keen on that single defining their career. I think they've made peace with it in more recent years. Uh, but for a long time, I believe they didn't play it live. But uh, I entered in... Um, where is it? Where is it? I ended with these albums. Sons and Fascination and Sister Feelings Call. Now these albums, if I recall correctly, were released at the same time and they were packed in cellophane in such a way. Now this is 1981. I probably bought these albums because they were uh, well reviewed in one of the music magazines and uh, I was on the lookout for new kind of electronic new wavy type bands a um, bit like Depeche Mode or Human League and uh, The Cure and so on and so forth and Simple Minds came on my radar and I bought this uh, these, these this pair of albums um, I absolutely love these albums. These are great, great albums. This one is more instrumental, Sister Feelings Call. It's, it's, I think it's about 30 minutes long, so it's kind of a bit of a mini album, but this is the main album, Sons and Fascination. And it starts off brilliantly with uh, In Trance's Mission. Uh, Sweat and Bullet was a single that I later bought on uh, a 12 inch single. Uh, 70 Cities as Love Brings the Fall. Now this really interesting sound so you've got charlie birchall's guitars jim kerr's voice um but on the guitars you got a lot of uh well you didn't it's not what you got it's what you didn't get you didn't get guitar solos so i think they were very uh modern sounding modernistic uh synthesizer based um a very marching drum beat quite often um not dissimilar to echo and the bunny men uh, but definitely a huge amount more keyboards than Echo and the Bunny Men. And Jim Kerr is a very distinctive sing singer, but not as, not with such a rich, a rich tone as uh, Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunny Men. Uh, Love Song was another uh, single from this album, Open Side Two, This Earth uh, That You Walk Upon, Seeing Out the Angels. Lots of light and shade in this particular, um, on these these two albums really interesting but not really commercial so that then led i really like those albums so that then led to me going backwards in their career and i bought this album uh, empires and dance which uh, was the preceding album to um, sons and fascination and that has a great lead-off single uh, i travel 
um, and Celebrate, well, I think was another single as well. Kind of kraut rocky, I believe. Um, I might I might describe them as so very keyboard definitely must have been influenced by the likes of can and so on not really uh, tangerine dream style but more of a more can so very rhythmic um, but yeah good album good album um, that one I think is uh, the Acropolis um, in Athens and then I went back to the beginning uh, life in a day which as uh, as a Chelsea girl was a single on that one didn't know anything about about them when this came out along with its successor uh, Real to Real Cacophony with a plain album cover. Um, I found these earlier albums um, not so much um, Empires and Dance which was really beefy sounding as well but these two earlier albums were much more kind of thin sounding very new wavy um, new band kind of you get the sense that they're, they're young guys trying to make their way in the world and they sound very very young and experimental on these albums so kudos to them for doing it um but didn't really um resonate with me really strongly anyway new gold dream came along and i absolutely adored it it was um all at once it was a better production um i think it was walsh is it um who's the producer here peter walsh it was produced by Peter Walsh and somehow he gets the sound and the more growing commerciality out of this band and the bottom end is a whole lot beefier, the songs are more mature and uh, the whole thing sounds like a complete piece. Um, it's a band that has truly arrived. Um, it opens with um, Someone Somewhere in Summertime and that one also, one of the things I did with um, Simply uh, uh, Simple Minds, I almost said Simply Red, Simple Minds, is I started buying lots of these uh, these 12 inch singles. Um, where is it? Uh, yeah, Someone Somewhere in Summertime. This is a fantastic 12 inch single. Not only do these 12 inch 45s sound amazing, but when it's beautifully produced, and you get an extended version like you do of the opening track from the album um, with a great extended guitar uh, intro. It just leaps from the speakers. It's, it sounds truly magnificent. And then there are these glittering uh, prize from the album as well. And there's a few others that, that followed. So I bought quite a few. Um, one of the things that was interesting to me was that the drummer for much of this album was a guy called Mike Ogletree, who I believe is sunk without trace, trace now. I saw Mike Ogletree um, play the drums for a band called Café Jacques, which was a band that was recommended and endorsed by Phil Collins uh, back in the early or the mid-1970s. And I saw him, and what was really interesting about him was a very interesting uh, drummer uh, drummer with lots of complex moves but what was particularly good at capturing your attention is that his drum kit was placed at the front of the stage so a cafe jack obviously thought he was a bit of a star in the making anyway he hung around for a couple of albums with them and then he moved on to, to simple minds um, only to be replaced um, midway through this album i believe or, um, or at least this album also introduced longtime drummer Mel Gaynor um, who in a similar fashion to uh, Genesis touring drummers which in 1976 was Bill Bruford the famous Bill Bruford he, he was replaced by Chester Thompson who stayed with the band for a very long time and it's very similar to the Mike Ogletree Mel Gaynor handover where Mel Gaynor just like Chester Thompson hit the drums so much harder so the sound was altogether bigger and more stadium-like. Um, so yeah, Mel Gaynor came along. Now, my love affair with Simple Minds uh, didn't just stop with uh, someone um, somewhere in summertime, but you, this album also had Promised You a Miracle on it, and of course New Gold Dream and Glittering Prizes. I've just shown the 12-inch single there as well. But this has got, this is the perfect balance of guitar and keyboards and that beefier bottom end. So I think that's the album to go to. But I want to say one or two other things about the band that kind of put me off, really. They then followed um, 
New Gold Dream with Sparkle in the Rain. That was quickly followed by uh, Once Upon a Time. I can't find my vinyl for this one at the moment. But what was characteristic about these albums um, was just that this sound just got too much. Uh, this particular one, uh, Sparkle in the Rain, included the famous Waterfront single, but it also had Up on the Catwalk, Speed Your Love to Me, had a version of Lou Reed Street Hustle, which was kind of quite different. Um, but I felt that when you heard Waterfront and Up on the Catwalk, Speed Your Love to Me, which again I've got here is a, is a, is a tremendous, uh, tremendously um, powerful audio experience on 12 inch. Um, it were, it's a bit like, uh, for, for those of you who are into hi-fi, when they talk about the loudness wars over the past 20 years, where almost everything in the mix is, is, is made louder, louder so, you know, everything louder than everything else. Um, so you can kind of hear everything, but it becomes wearing as a listening experience. So you, don't, you, you need light and shade, you need a high dynamic range to kind of maintain your attention. Uh, an enjoyment of an extended piece of music like an album. And Simple Minds uh, preceded the Loudness Wars by uh, making songs that were just loud in themselves. Um, and when you hear them back to back, one after another, it becomes incredibly wearing. So you hear Waterfront, you think, oh, that's fantastic. It's magnificent sounding. It's big, big, big sounding. And then you hear it in the whole album and it's just like oh another one that's an onslaught on my ears so um it kind of put me off really and i and i and i fell out of love with them even though i continued to to buy the albums and there's uh this one here uh alive and kicking a great another great great song uh but it's got this um picture on the reverse here of them playing a big festival and that to me sounded like uh the way simple minds were you know the the band they became uh now i saw them live only once and i'm ashamed to say i was drunk <laughs> and i was kind of expecting with all the big keyboard washers and the big drums and the guitar i was expecting a, an experience that was akin to my favorite band at the time which which was genesis something really well structured um great great sound and uh, lots of um, light and shade in the show but climax after climax and so on and it, maybe it was because I was drunk but I, I kind of came away thinking uh, just like me on the night they were a bit ramshackled um, a bit too loose for a band that were creating really crafting their sound on their albums and uh, I saw them I think on the Sparkle, uh, Sparkle uh, the Rain tour uh, Sparkle in the Rain tour and uh, never went to see them again, sadly. Now, I did return to the band um, when they released this album, Street Fighting Years, because I thought the single, the Celtic-flavoured single, uh, Belfast Child, was, uh, was absolutely superb. Uh, and this, I don't know whether this is uh, true or not, but Trevor Horn produces this particular album, and maybe what, hap maybe what happened is that they decided to scale back on the more bombastic sounds that they'd, uh, they'd been employing in the previous two albums. And uh, came, came up with something that was just a little bit more restrained and all the better for it. So that's a very, very good album as well and one to seek out. Now, in more recent years, and kudos to them, they continue to make you know albums, um, which I have to say, I've barely listened to uh, that much at all. Um, but they're still out there, still doing it. But for me, the album I'm always going to go back to is, is this one, New Gold Dream. And it's hard for me to say to, to people, um, well, if you like so-and-so, you'll like Simple Minds. But they were of a, of a, of a time when this album uh, and the albums that preceded it were coming through. Um, they were in, in the mix with, uh, like I've said, Echo and the Bunny Men, which, you know, there's, there's a drum sound that's got some parallels. Um, you've got Human League, uh, but a bigger sound than the Human League, uh, and also less commercial than the Human League, League became, uh, with the Dare album, of course. Um, and you've got, although the Cure are much more guitar-based, 
um, there's certainly some parallels there as, as there as well. And I think the audience had a big crossover with Simple Minds. Um, but the, you know, Don't You Forget About Me kind of spoiled it for a lot of the fans of the more experimental side. And just to draw the parallel one more time with Genesis, um, you can look at the 1970s if you were a Genesis fan and say they were the more experimental, more progressive years. But then their audience grew exponentially when they became much more of a pop crossover band in the 1980s. So Simple Minds have got a, a similar, followed a similar path there, but they've uh, continued to make music and they've kind of gone back to a more experimental uh, approach as well. And all the better for it. So anyway, that's my recommendation, regardless of everything I've said about not being able to draw parallels with other bands. Um, if you want to discover Simple Minds, then by all means, choose one of their uh, hit albums. Uh, this is a particular uh, uh, kind of box set, I must say, which is worth getting, which is the first five albums, which is, includes New Gold Dream. Um, that's really worth getting, but there's lots of hits collections that are out there from the early years and, of course, later on as well. Go there, but if you want to get the whole kind of coherent album experience, then New Gold Dream is the one to go for, in my judgment. Anyway, another album review. Um, why you should listen to review so um yeah new gold dream thanks for watching i hope you found it interesting and as always inspirational um at least inspiring you enough to pick up the album from your own collection uh, but as i say if you haven't uh, you haven't you know big fan of simple minds you want to, not sure which one to pick new gold dream is the one to go for so uh, thanks for watching once again and i'll see you on the next one